Hi guys, it's Ed Barton, the Social Anxiety Coach again here, and today we're talking about setbacks and how to deal with them. Okay, welcome to the video. If you don't know me and you don't know my channel, I'm Ed Barton. I'm a social anxiety coach. I suffered with crippling social anxiety right up until the age of 32 when I took massive action, I transformed my life, and I overcame social anxiety. And now I'm coaching other people from around the world to do the same thing. It's part of my mission to raise awareness about social anxiety disorder, shine a light on this condition, destigmatize it. So if you'd like to jump on board and support the cause, please subscribe to the channel and help us to help more people get the word out and reach more people and help them overcome social anxiety. So this is a video I've been planning to make for a while. But in the last week, I've had two coaching clients who both had the same questions about setbacks. So the first point that I want to make about setbacks is that it's completely normal. It's a natural part of the process. And over the time that I was overcoming social anxiety, I had numerous setbacks. I remember several times sitting in the chair at my therapist's office talking about how I'd overcome social anxiety, how it all felt like it was a bad dream, how it was all behind me and I was sure I'd overcome it. Then the next week I had a debilitating kind of setback and I felt that I'd gone right back to square one. So the first thing to remember if you're watching this and you've had a setback, it's completely normal. You get through it, they happen and it's okay. The second point I wanna make is the difference between a relapse and a lapse. So if you're watching this and you feel like you've gone backwards recently in your efforts to overcome social anxiety, you're experiencing a lapse. It's impossible for you to have a total relapse if you've already started to make inroads into overcoming social anxiety. If you've already learned some techniques, some breathing techniques or some CBT techniques for learning to think in more rational, skillful ways. If you've already got some tools and you feel like you've taken a step back, it's impossible for you to go back to square one. Although all the alarmist negative thinking in your head will be saying, oh my God, this is the start of a downhill slide. I'm going right back to where I started from. That's impossible, okay? It can't happen because you're not the same person as you were when you started to overcome social anxiety. So if you've already started the process, it's important to remember that. It's a lapse, it's not as severe as a relapse, and it will not last as long. Thirdly, if you've had a lapse, there's probably good reason for it. So try and look objectively for reasons for this lapse. For example, did you drink too much coffee before you went into that meeting and then had a bit of a jittery meltdown? Did you overstretch yourself? Did you try an exposure challenge that was too extreme or too difficult for you and this put you into the panic zone? So. There are usually reasons for lapses, and I'm gonna move on to that in the next point, but try and look for some of them. Number four, as I said, when you have a lapse, there are usually reasons for it. Now, one of these may be, as I mentioned, overstretching. People who are trying to overcome social anxiety often undertake social exposure challenges, and they try and get themselves out of their comfort zones. And as I've said in other videos, it's important to calibrate these very carefully, because if you overstretch yourself, you can put yourself in the panic zone, and then this can lead to a, a setback. You can re-traumatize yourself, and then you can have a step back. So overstretch is often one of the reasons for a setback. Another reason is burnout. Now, people who are trying to overcome social anxiety, like you are if you're watching this, you probably push yourself. You push yourself to try and overcome it. You push yourself into challenging situations. You push yourself to work out, to maybe meditate and to eat right. And you're pushing yourself very hard on this journey. And the problem with that is that sometimes we can be a bit too harsh with ourselves. We, we pile on all this stress. And then this is also coupled with a naturally very self-critical personality. So you have the external stressors of going out and trying new things and trying challenging situations. Then you also have the inner stress of like, I have to do it perfectly. I have to do this every day. I have to push, push, push. And this can lead to a kind of nervous exhaustion and burnout. So you really need to be careful of that. So the third reason for a lapse, which you may not have heard about or be familiar with, is something called ego backlash. And this is basically 
when you start to undertake serious personal transformation, which is what we're trying to do here when we overcome social anxiety, and as I've said, social anxiety is a really deep-rooted issue. It's all about your whole self. Therefore, you have to change your whole self. This isn't superficial, simple change that we're talking about. This is real deep stuff. So as you start to change on a fundamental level, your ego is going to feel very threatened by that. It's basically going to pipe up and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you think you're doing? You, you're going changing. I don't like this. Who are you? We were comfortable in that self-concept of being a loser. We always thought of ourselves as awkward and a misfit. Now you're going out. You're going to parties. Now you're speaking to people. You're, you're feeling confident. What's going on? I don't like this, right? It, it threatens the ego. So what the ego does, and in a perverse kind of way, it's only got your self-interest at heart. And I kind of liken it to a parent who taught, who parents you in a kind of toxic way. They, they don't want to let go of you. They're overweening. As you go and change, your ego is going to pull you back down to this level where it feels comfortable and where it recognizes you. So what you'll notice as you make breakthroughs with your social anxiety, this will often be followed by a setback. So you'll take like five steps forward and then this will be followed by a couple of steps back. And that is often the ego at play coming in and basically saying, whoa, don't you go getting too far ahead of yourself. Come on, you know, you're a loser. You're a misfit. You, you've lived your life uh, all these years, you know, in this way. And that it, will, it wants you to stay in alignment with that. And the other thing about the ego is that it's created all these survival techniques for you and survival strategies. That might be keeping your mouth shut, trying to be invisible, sitting at the back of the room, taking long, you know, routes to, to work via back streets so people don't see you. And these are all designed to basically keep you safe, keep you alive in the ego's idea, right? So if you then start putting yourself into meetings or at the front of the room or into conversations, the ego gets freaked out. It's like, this is a challenge to our survival. You're going against all the survival techniques that we've been using all these years and it gets freaked out and it starts to play up. So be very aware of ego backlash. Okay, the fifth point I want to make today is if you've suffered a lapse, then it's really important to be kind to yourself, okay? Stay objective. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's very easy to slip back into our old social anxiety ways of thinking and blow everything out of proportion and be like, oh my God, I'm such a stupid idiot. I'm going back to step one. It was all just luck. It was just fluke. Now I'm going right downhill and it's all gone to shit, okay? Beware of those voices because that's your old social anxiety narrative playing out in your mind. You really want to be objective and rational and kind, okay? So you've had a lapse, so give yourself a little break, okay? Be kind to yourself, look after yourself. If you've been pushing yourself to do exposure challenges and all the rest of it, maybe take a day off, sit at home and do something that's going to be regenerating and nourishing for yourself. You know, that might mean doing some yoga, doing some meditation, having a nice bath or eating nutritious food or even watching a box set or eating some junk if you know you just need to treat yourself and just take a little rest okay i don't mean to make that a habit it's just like a, a cheat day a one-off to give you some rest and just recharge your batteries a little bit and also don't over generalize that's one of the cognitive distortions that goes along with social anxiety don't just think oh this one you know i've had this one mess up now everything's gone to shit it's not like that, okay? There's still gonna to be tons of other positives you're doing. And what I found with my clients is they'll say like, oh, I had a lapse on Monday, but then I still went out to the supermarket on Tuesday. I went to the coffee shop on Wednesday and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, whoa, you're still doing stuff. You know, even despite this lapse, you're still doing stuff that you could never even imagine a couple of months ago. So there's still all these positives going on, but because of the cognitive distortions that come back in, you start overgeneralizing, you start black and white thinking, you start disqualifying the positive, you know, and these are all cognitive distortions that go with social anxiety. Your thinking then just becomes really unskillful and you're like, ah, you know, it's all shit and I'm just stupid and it's all ruined. So be kind to yourself, watch your self-talk and your thinking habits and look for the positives. So my sixth and final point for dealing with lapses is to build back up slowly, okay? So if you've been through all of the steps that I've just covered there, you've had a rest day, you've recharged your batteries, then you're ready to go back out and start facing your fears. And I suggest doing this systematically through using a fear pyramid or a hierarchy or a ladder 
of your fears and you know what you're working on, you have clear defined objectives, go back to that fear ladder and go working on your objectives again. But go back gently and slowly. It's basically like falling off a bike, right? You know how to ride the bike now. You know you can do it. You've been out there. You've, you've put yourself in situations you never imagined possible and you've acted in ways you didn't think you could. So that knowledge is there. You've come off the bike, so now there's fear involved as well. So you've lost a bit of confidence in your abilities. So you get back on the bike and you don't immediately start driving at full speed and trying to do tricks and wheelies and stuff like that. You just pedal back up gently and slowly. So maybe start with some of the lower points on your fear target, on your fear ladder. So walking down the street, making eye contact, maybe trying to say good morning to a couple of people, going back into the supermarket, trying to get some chit chat going with cashiers, okay? You don't go straight back to the coffee shop where you had what you, you know, quote unquote, a meltdown and try and redo your highest challenge on your fear pyramid or your fear ladder. Just start gently and slowly, get back on the bike and start building up that positive momentum again that you had before your laps. Okay, so to wrap up, those are my six steps for dealing with lapses. Number one is realize that it's totally normal. Number two is recognize the difference between a lapse and a relapse. Number three is look for reasons for the lapse. Number four is understand common reasons like overstretch, burnout, and ego backlash. Number five, be kind to yourself, watch yourself talk, give yourself some rest, look for the positives. And finally, number six is to build back up slowly. So if you're going through a tough patch at the moment after suffering a lapse, please feel free to drop me a message. You can email me. You can jump on the phone with me on Skype and we can talk about it. I will do whatever I can to help you through that difficult period that you're going through right now. As always, I really hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, please subscribe to the channel here and check out some of our other videos and help us raise awareness of social anxiety, destigmatize this condition, shine a light on it, and help as many people as possible through this debilitating mental health condition.